Hi Mar here and welcome to the first episode of the Krita Beginner's Guide where I'm gonna talk about Krita and how to use it in you know digital painting in general. This first episode will be all about setting up Krita for your system so you get the most performance and the best like settings for your computer. Also, we will set up our first uh, canvas. This is for the really beginners in digital art, you know, to set up what DPI you should pick and how big the canvas should be for different usage. And at the end, we will also set up our workspace, you know, to kind of give some kind of baseline. What I think is really good workspace and what, you know, Docker's windows you need uh, for digital painting in Krita. So, uh, this whole tutorial is more for the really beginners or the people who are switching from other software like Photoshop or, I don't know, Paint, Paint Tool Sci and stuff like that. So, if you are really, like, if you actually know how to use Krita, this probably won't be for you. So, you can skip this video anyway. <laughs> the first thing we have to do is to open our Krita, which I already did, as you can see. And you should see something like this. It, maybe there are some different windows on left or on the right side, you know, the dockers. But in general, it should look pretty much like this. The first thing I said is to set up our performance for our computer. First thing you have to kind of check on your computer is if you have only integrated graphics card or some really old graphics card that can't handle OpenGL, uh, the newer OpenGL, of course, you have to do a little bit of tweaking in here. You have to go to settings up here, configure Krita and click on display here. And how I said, if you have the integrated graphics card, the Intel HD or some really old graphics card, you have to uncheck the OpenGL. Otherwise your strokes with the brush will be super slow and it will render super slowly. And this will help you improve that and make it like usable, make the Korea usable for you. On the other hand, if you have some like dedicated graphics card in your computer, something newer, you know, I don't know, something that can actually handle the newer OpenGL, you can just click this, the lines will look better and maybe even render faster. So yeah, if you have dedicated graphics card, check this. If you don't, un uncheck this. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this part. And now let's take a look at the performance here. And this this really depends on how big canvas you want and how many layers are you using usually in your like painting process. I found out that four gigabytes is quite okay for most of the cases, like four gigabytes dedicated memory just for Krita is quite okay for like most of the cases. My whole pool is eight gigabytes because I have eight gigabytes of memory in my computer, but I think around 4,000 megabytes is okay for the memory limit. Sometimes when you like cross uh, something more than 4,000 4, times 4,000 pixels, you have to probably go a little bit higher than this. But usually I'm working 3.5 to 3.5 thousand, so it's quite... I think it's okay, the 4 gigabytes of memory for that. You can go higher, but in any case, I would probably leave about 2 gigabytes of memory just for your system and for your other applications. So never go like, you know, full full 100% maybe, I don't know, if I have 8 gigs, I would probably be able to use like 6 gigabytes just for Krita and be okay with that, but the 50% works well for me right now. That's pretty much it, you can like file size limit, 4 gigabytes is I think enough. If you have like a credible amount of layers and your whole canvas size is like incredibly big, you should probably increase that, but I don't think you will run out of four gigabytes of me like of the file size anytime soon. If you are using it just for digital painting, I think you should be okay with the four gigabytes. Now you have some advanced things. Uh, you don't really need to change anything. Uh, maybe if you have AMD CPUs, uh, the disable vector op optimization, you can do this if you have any performance issues. Well, and that's everything for the performance side of the Krita. So let's move on to creating our first canvas and why we are creating the first canvas before like managing our uh, dockers and everything in workspaces is because you can't really do much without creating canvas. Like a lot of these things are, you can't really do 
like use any of these tools or anything and you can't even save your workspace that's the main reason why i'm doing it in this order so the first thing we're gonna do is to create our canvas by file new and now we have this little window here there are some options on the left side here in the menu the custom document you can just you know create whatever document you want then create from clipboard which means if you create some print screen or you know if you copy some image from your browser from the internet you can like just copy the image and then don't even have to like create a new document and then paste it there you can just create document right from the clipboard from the copied thing you just did so this will set up the width height and like all the dimensions to be exactly the same as your copied image so that's quite helpful now we have the animation there are some templates for this comic and stuff like that some textures i don't think this is like really necessary at this point if you're just gonna use the creta for digital painting i don't think you need any of these maybe comic templates are quite useful but let's not look at them right now maybe in the future videos because this is all about creating your canvas for doing digital painting so let's click on a custom document and let's go through the all things the name is the name of the document you don't really have to change this because you can change it when you first save your like your project your canvas when you first save it you can change the name and it will remain the same so uh you don't really need to change it but you can you know it can save you sometime i don't know if you can save but you don't really have to now we have image size there are some predefined like prefabs here like classic european a3 to a6 300 600 dpi versions from every from everything then some texture textures this is for creating like texture for games and stuff like that if you are into game development <laughs> and now we have some us sizes i'm not really familiar familiar with those some legal letter tabloid i i don't know i think tabloid is the big one right yeah yeah that's the big one uh but let's go with a3 or stuff like that you can if you do something specifically for printing this can help you the reason why there is no a2 size is because uh a2 or a1 or even bigger sizes you know like a0 a0 is because krita is not really uh good enough at handling this amount of pixels so that's why they only choose a3 at 600 ppi because that's like 10,000 times 7,000 which is like incredibly big uh, amount of pixels so but if you don't want anything like this this will really depends on how many ram and how powerful your processor is on your computer how i said i have about 8 gigabytes of memory so i know that i can handle 3000 times 3000 pixels if you have only 4 gigabytes of memory you might uh, get some problems in this size i would recommend go to like 2000 times 2000 or something like that some smaller canvas that can really improve your performance the reason why i'm going this high is because i'm usually printing all of my paintings at least I tr i'm trying to print because you know i like to see them like in real life how would they look on the print so I'm usually printing, so I'm going kind of higher. Usually when I'm doing something specific that I know that I want to like create something specific, you know, I, I know that I'm gonna print this on like super big canvas, I would go like higher, but usually not bigger than 5,000 pixels on the shorter side of the picture, you know? And resolution I'm keeping on 300 PPI because how I said, I'm usually printing out my paintings and if you set the resolution on 300 ppi the print will be will have more quality to it it's kind of like you know default quality for printing the ppi means points or pixels per inch and it's like a density of pixels on the print you know for the printer that's information just information for the printer it doesn't really if you're just gonna use it for i don't know showing it on internet or something like that it doesn't really matter what number you put there 
this is the information for the printer how we should like convert the pixels to real size like real life sizes like you know inches and stuff like that we can check it how many inches is 3000 pixels by just like selecting inches or centimeters or whatever is your preferable measurement unit but i have like uh i didn't know that that it's exactly 10 times 10 inches but it's quite funny that <laughs> i didn't know that before <laughs> anyway if you set up something like this you can save your preset in here save as and you can just select like you know uh i know for example for me is 300 pixels work i don't know something like that and hit save and now you have it in the predefined somewhere uh, i'm probably blind wait a second yeah it's here 3000 pixels work and that, this is my preset right now so i can save it now let's move on to color uh in the color department if you're really just starting with digital painting i wouldn't really change anything here but uh, if you get a little bit more experience with especially printing since most of us have like normal rgb monitors normal like monitors you know not something extra special i would just keep it on rgb the profile that's the profile for the printer so he knows what he's supposed to do this is icc profile printer takes this profile and this profile will tell the printer what to do with the rgb colors how to convert them to cmyk colors that's pretty much it then we have depth 8 bits is enough for like usual for the basic usage so you don't have to change this either and now let's take a look in the content up here and this will kind of do a little bit preset of your like canvas and layers we can change like the layers how they work in this the first layers the number is telling you how many layers will be created with the creation of the canvas so i have it set up on two because i want my background layer and something to paint on because i painted so many times on the background layer like i did my line art so many times on just the background layer and then i like and then when i was doing the coloring i was just like you know ah, so angry but that's why I changed it to two. Image background color, that's the color that will be on the background layer. And image background opacity, that's, you can change the background opacity. That's pretty much like, yeah, you can change the opacity of the layers. And now the background. As first layer, that means that the background will be the first layer and then layer above it will be the, you know, the empty layer. Yeah, and that's pretty much it you need to change here. You can put some description here. That's just, you know, to describe the preset, but you don't really need to. And now let's create our canvas. Should look something like this. And as you can see, now we can actually use all of these like brushes and everything and tools. I don't know what I just did. Yeah, I did some. <laughs> And we can use all the tools and stuff like that. Okay, so we've created our first canvas. Now let's kind of play with the whole workspace, you know, with the windows and the windows you kind of, you need for painting. I, I think you need for painting. Also, uh, if you have created your canvas, now you can actually change your predefined workspaces here. There's like animation, big paint, big paint two, big vector and stuff like that default. You probably have something like this from the default. You can change it to big paint two, which I kind of like. I think that's my actual setup here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. And uh, you can switch up, you know, these, uh, these dockers like just by catching the name here of the docker and you can like put it wherever you want that's one of the things so let's go through them the first one on the left is toolbox that's classic toolbox from every other software we have brush we have some line tool some square tool circle tool polygon tool you can make whatever polygon you want and it will fill itself with the brush preset okay now we have some open polygon tool which you have to like um, 
apply by enter, hitting enter. Now we have some curves, you know, vectors and stuff, multi-brush. I, I won't go through all of these because they are really, really simple and default and you don't really need to, like, you will kind of get it from the picture what they are probably doing. Now let's go to color sliders. You can keep these in. Like, I'm not really using them, only at some points when this advanced color selector is not really good for, for example, going in a really low values. I, I, for example, want just a switch by one, you know, go one value down, but I can do it here. This is more precise. And now we have palettes. You probably have this empty or with really low amount of colors. A good, good thing about the palettes here that it takes the same files as the Photoshop. So if you have some palettes in Photoshop, you can import them in Krita, which is really, really useful. I like that. Now we have the advanced color selector, which is like, I really like this one. So you have dark here, light here and saturated here. Now you have the hue, you can change the hue by this color wheel. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for this. Now we can go specific color selector. I don't think anyone ever used this because it's stupid, I think. <laughs> Because no one, like, n no artist is actually using RGB models to, like, pick color because they are super confusing. You have to do some, like, adding and dividing, I think. And it's crazy. I just don't use this. This will, this is just stupid. Maybe only if, if you have, like, specific color code you want to use for your painting, maybe you can use this specific color selector, but I wouldn't use it, like, for painting. Now we have brush presets. You probably have like these different categories. Usually you have some default brushes in here. They are good enough for painting. Maybe in some time you will like want to add more presets. They are downloadable, downloadable on the site of krita.org. So we can download them from there or create your own. But I'm not gonna show it how to create your own brushes right now. Now we have the overview. This is like the small thumbnail version of your whole canvas and you can navigate by it just by clicking it or, you know, zoom with it <laughs> and stuff like that. Like it's good for the over overall view on your canvas and on your painting. And now we have layers. How I said, we, we set up two layers. The first was the background layer with the white color. And the second one is the, our painting layer. Now we can change the blending of the layer, like addition, blur and stuff like that. You will probably use these like in the painting process sometime in the future, maybe right now, I don't know. Now we can add layers, duplicate layers and stuff like that. I'm not gonna go through that. Now we have composition and undo history. I think the undo history is more important than the composition. I don't really, I don't find the compositions that important. I think the, I don't really use this window at all. The undo history, yeah, I'm using that because it then it, in these thumbnails, it can show you what you actually did, did in that step of the history and you can go to that step. So for example, I want to go draw a polygon. Yep. And I've got my polygon, no, polygon with this weird brush back. So this is one of the things I really like because I can see exactly what I did in that step and I can go back to it. You can set up the amount of steps you can go back in, in settings, configure Krita, miscellaneous and undo stack size. Now it's set up to 30. That means you can go 30 steps back and you can go up with this one, but it will probably take some of your memory like your RAM memory. Uh, and that's pretty much, yeah. And you can set it up. Also, if you are here, the autosave every five minutes, this is really important option. So if you don't have this on, probably put it on because Krita is still kind of in development and it's open source and it tends to crash from time to time. And it's really bad if you like have one hour of work and you haven't saved and you know, everything's gone. 
So if you have the autosave every five minutes, that means you can you can lose maximum five minutes of your work, which is not that bad. So yeah, put this autosave on, I guess. Okay. And that leads us to the last window here. That's the tool options. Every tool you have here has some options and you can change them with this tool option docker. I will not go through the, all the options because you know, every tool has some and it would be, it would take too long to explain everything. So maybe in another video. So that's pretty much it. I hope that this little introduction to the Kratos beginner's guide series helps at least the starting artist to kind of set up your Krita so it's not laggy and it works better and that you are able to create your own canvas and set up the workspace right for the painting. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.